So I was going around this roundabout and I just remember going around the whole roundabout in, in Preston Docks and I just started driving home. And I just thought, I don't even know why I'm going. I don't want to do this anymore. So 2016 season, you lost your card, I'm right in saying. Yep. And then, um, I know we kind of brushed over that lightly, but I kind of want to really come onto the open as well, because that's, that's, for me, what arguably the most exciting story of this. What happened in 2017 then? Is that when you decided to start coaching? 2017, I started the season and I was playing a bit of Challenge Tour, but Euro Pro. And the season was up and down, didn't really fire on all cylinders. And by the time the season ended or came to an end, I was in a situation where I was in a good enough position on the order of merit on Euro Pro to play the grand final. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, I was driving to SNA from where, where I live now in Lytham to, I was going through Preston and I was driving to go and practice for um, Q School. Yeah. And I remember driving and I was in a bad place at the time, like mentally, because I was on European tour, then I lost my card because I felt like I only had half a shot really with the card I had mm. at actually maintaining a, a tour card because it, what you got to remember is it's a, a European tour card, but the money that you're playing for is so small compared to what the likes of the Rory's are playing for. and people The Rolex like series and stuff like that, it's different. If you're it? not getting into those big money events and making the cut, it's really, really hard because you're only playing for like a quarter of the money of what a normal European mm. tour event would be. So it might be a European tour card, but... There's levels in, to it, isn't there, I guess? Yeah, again, there's tiers. And I was in the lowest tier, like playing for the smallest money. And I wasn't getting into every event. So I had to try and fill some weeks in playing Challenge Tour. So even though you're on European tour, you're still mm. going back to your roots of playing challenge tour. So you're in a situation where you don't really feel like you can get off because you're not giving yourself the most chance. And just a question, then this might sound really random, but then say if you, within that year, met yeah. somebody who played golf whatever, and they said you were a tour pro, and they were like, oh my word. Did you kind of feel ever like, obviously you should feel really proud of that, but did you ever feel like you didn't feel like a, a full tour pro, but you didn't have that full card? Definitely, like it's, how people see things that like I would class that as yes it was a European tour card but it was never like a proper full European mm. tour card well it, even though it was a full one um, it wasn't enough to play like a, a 35 events you weren't going to the BMW going, PJ for example no like I, I wasn't going to places like Dubai and Qatar yeah. places like that I was. Just, do you almost feel like there should be like a gold European <laughs> tour card a silver one and a bronze one that would and help. you would have been in bronze yep. at that level that would, that would be a good way to because like, it's almost like you say it's just one European tour card and that's it and you actually get a card don't you yeah, yeah. and a clip yep. a belt clip yep. is that it any other bits you get a, a sticker box. for your car no <laughs> you get like a, a, a nice box what's in the box well your clip and, oh, right, and okay. your card have you still got that obviously oh, yeah. so like when, when you get that like say you think brilliant I've made it a European tour but like say it, it has got levels do, just, do, do you think it's, do you think it's like fair and that sounds like a daft question, but do you think it's it's correctly structured? I think Q School um, is a difficult place to gain a card and then maintain a card and keep a card. You don't really have a full chance at doing it. Like, just look at how many people get the tour card at Q School and then lose it. Unfortunately, the rules have changed since I've lost my card, but. You can't fall from European tour card, uh, European tour all the way to Euro Pro anymore. You you stop at Challenge well, Tour. There's a safety net. There's a safety net now, um, and that would have massively benefited me. And I might have still been playing because if that was in place wow. then. But at the time, I just fell from the top all the way to the Euro Pro, which I was I would class as at the bottom. Well, just take about that drive because that's part of an important part Sorry, of the story. Yeah. You've yeah. told me this before, I think, off air, I've told you earlier on, well, another time, but so you're in the car, you're feeling a bit of down, et cetera, and what, yeah. what happened uh, there? Basically, I'm driving to prepare for Q School. Yeah. And I remember getting to Preston, Preston Docks, and I was just in a bad place thinking, I, I don't really know why I'm driving here anymore. Like, I just, I've had enough. But I just don't want to talk to the loved ones in my, and sponsors in in my in my life at the time. 
I just wanted to make a decision and just get out. And I'd started researching, like doing PGA and things like that. And I've always been fairly good at like teaching the game to people and analyzing technique and stuff like that. So I was going around this roundabout and I just remember going around the whole roundabout in, in Preston Docks and I just started driving home. And I just thought, I don't even know why I'm going. I don't want to do this anymore. And I drove home, I pulled out of Q school, I pulled out of um, all the like last events of the year and I applied for my PGA. Was that on the same day or like just kind of days after it take a bit of time to get? No, I literally sat down for hours and did it all. And then my wife came home and she was like, oh, why are you not at golf? Well, from wife not at the time, but, um, and she was, I was like, packed in, that's it, it's done. And were you like, were you emotional at that? Obviously yeah. you're smiling now and saying that, but obviously that must have been a really tough decision. It was, it was, it was hard because when you're in that bubble of playing, like all my friends are golfers and tour players and when you're in that bubble, you're all trying to do the same thing and for me I just had a moment of madness and I just said I don't want to do this anymore wow it's not making me happy but it, it sounds like it came on all of a sudden there but it's been a build up I guess hasn't been, it of... yeah like like we were speaking about before it's 10 11 years of the same thing every day repetition good years bad years good results bad results like everybody being your best friend, everyone back in you, then six months later, everyone, no one's talking to you because you're playing bad. And just those emotions just got the better off me in the end. And I just said, I don't want to do this anymore. And did you, sorry, did you see that? Did you see friends come and go, like almost cling on as, cling, cling on as, is that the right Clingers word? on. <laughs> Clingers on, like that would cling on to you because I don't, you know. Yeah, you do get that, but. Like your, your true friends, sponsors, like they always talk to you basically, but even they get disappointed, unfortunately. And the people that have helped you along the way, certainly my mum and dad, like they just let it emotionally attack them. Yeah. With with that decision then, when you kind of on the sit the roundabout and you turn around, you come back, obviously there's lots of factors that go into it, but overriding, was it a case of, I don't think I'm good enough to do this? Or was it a case of, I think I am good enough, but to get to that point, it's going to be so much more, many years of this again and the grind, I just don't want to do that. Yeah, well, the situation I was in was, I was basically a Euro pro player again. And I just thought, to get to that 500,000 a year, every year, yeah. I have to go through probably another 12 months on Euro pro, graduate to Challenge Tour, finish, to finish in the top five on the order of merit. Then once I'm on Challenge Tour, I have to now finish top 15 on that order of merit. So that's another year. Then with it, that was the only way I felt like I had a good enough chance to earn 500,000 mm -hmm. by having a Challenge Tour European Tour card. So basically being a Challenge Tour graduate, you get a better Tour card than you would if you were a Q School graduate. Yeah. Like we were saying, you were, you ranked it as like bronze. That was a good way to, accurate way to do it. That put you in silver. Silver. And then you'd have a good chance of doing that. But that's a year on Euro Pro, a year on Challenge Tour. And then you've got a year on European Tour. But that was perfect. You know what I mean? Top Without five on Euro Pro. No hiccups. Yeah. Because I felt like if even if I got the Euro... Uh, the Q school category on Euro Pro, uh, European tour again. I still felt like that's not a good enough card to actually graduate and stay there. Like the amount of people that get that card and lose it because it's not strong. It doesn't get you into enough events. Does if again just going back to yeah. hyper, if the if the somebody must qualify from that. The, 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 sorry, going back to this idea of gold, silver, bronze. That yeah. bronze European tour card. Do people advance from there, or is it literally impossible? It's it's not impossible, but 25 graduate, and I'm sure it was like a three that maintain the card. Yeah, it's, it's very, very small. Well, we, we did a video, didn't we? We went to Illumina, Illumina, whatever it's called, in Spain, yeah. the final qualifying, and we did some interviews, or Rick did some interviews with a lot of the players. I remember Jeff Winther was one. Jeff Winther, uh, Scott uh, Gregory, yeah. uh, Dan Gavins. Um, and we kept an eye on them, didn't we, throughout the season? And... I don't think any of them. Jeff really... Winters, I think, has done 
okay. Right. Yeah. But so many of them just drop back out again. Yeah, well, I'm sure it was three on average that maintained the card from that category, um, which is such a small percentage. Don't forget, like at the start of Q School, there's, say there's 2,000 that enter. There's actually eight, three, yeah, 18 months mad. down the line, there's three people that are keeping that. Hi, this, is I mean? a, this is a silly question, a hypothetical one. Let's say t- start of 2017. I know you decided not to, to dwell there now, but yeah. let's just say you got given the gold card, the top European, yep. every invite for every event that year. Hand on heart, your ability-wise, do you think you would have, have, have been able to keep that and you would have actually succeeded? Do you think you had the, the ability to do so? Yeah, definitely. I just felt like ability was never really an issue. I felt mentally there was a lot of things that I wasn't happy with. Like, I, I always, I always like, kept on thinking about the money and thinking like, how much have I got to play this event like a bad month on tour and you could spend £15,000 yeah. before you know it you think god that's my whole savings gone like what am I going to do for the next week and I never actually concentrated on just golf I was concentrating on too much off the course yeah. instead of just playing golf like ability to play golf uh, there was I, no no issues I doubt this because I'm the kind of lad you are, but did you ever look at players who were doing quite well on tour that you were better than and almost resent them and think, I know that I can beat Tommy on a good day or Danny Willett's only a bit better than me or whatever and look at what they're doing. Did that ever cross your mind or, or not? Yeah, and when you're growing up, it was it was always the conversation at the golf club. Like, if if I, me and Tommy were in the same event, like, oh, you missed the cup. You see what, how Tommy did? And it was always like comparison. Yeah. And... It was never, never really got to me. It became a bit of a joke with the lads at the golf club. You'd say, "Oh, like, <laughs> watch him. He's going to come over and say, oh, I was watching you last week. Lucky there. You missed the cut, didn't you? Yeah, thanks for that. Cheers.' And oh, just great. About, just what you want. Just about to carry on putting here. <sighs> and half the time, I had earpieces in, and they weren't even turned on. <laughs> uh, the um, also just going back to this, so you, you lost the European tour card. And you, and how old are you at that point? Twenty eight or twenty seven? Um, or young. 27 how much of it is also playing on your mind that you'd have probably had friends yep. that you were seeing maybe getting successful jobs and getting nice cars and potentially getting married at that time yep. and having children how much did that also play on your mind as a 27 year old man with a with a girlfriend kind of where does that all fit into your life for well, massive part like obviously golf was getting me down at the time because I was going through a bad spell but I had good support at home. Well, my girlfriend at the time, Livy, who's now my wife. Um, we were in a situation where we bought a house, but it was obviously mainly her money that bought the house. And then I was feeling a bit like incapable of yeah. paying the bills, yeah, basically, because yeah. I was playing Euro Pro. And, I mean, you can't really play Euro Pro and own a house and it's crazy that, children it? and stuff like that because i bet if you said that to a lot of people just like if you said to a lot of people probably listening you're a challenged tour player yeah i wonder what the perception is like mm. i would like i reckon if if draw me a challenged tour player yeah show me what house they live in show me what car they drive show me how much they've got in the bank yeah i think would be very different to reality very different um, where again you go back to this idea of European tour player show me the car the house the the bank balance but again that is so small of amount of players who probably with the Ferrari the mansion and 10 million in the bank exactly it's probably only, five it's only players a few. it's only a few so you know I'm, I mean, I'm, when I was 27 I got married I'd, I'd, I'd had my first child and I remember looking at that time and, and I know quite a lot of professionals in similar boats to you who are out on tour who would be, in my opinion, a long way in their life um, goals, let's say, a long way away from that because they've not got married just yet and they've not had children and things like that. Like, And I always thought, I wonder what they think about that. I wonder, and you're just kind of expressing that as well now. Well, yeah, like, like I was saying there, if, if you take me back to that 27-year-old that had to then go to Euro Pro, go to Challenge Tour, go to European Tour, like that was over three years... That would be the perfect scenario. You'd still struggle to buy a house doing that. Yeah. So I, was, I, was, I just felt like I couldn't contribute and I wanted children. And at that time, it was just like a weird time in my life. And I was just thinking, if I don't do it now, I could be 35 before I'm having a child and yeah. buying a house. Yeah. Yeah.